what is it about? What is, what is it and what is it not? First of all, uh, it's not a morality play. <laughs> what it is is a sitcom that was produced, I'm sure, to make money. And we need to remind ourselves of that. Uh, that being said, uh, it's, there's a lot we can find in it. The, uh, there's no religion in it, there's no Christianity. The only time I could find that Ted ever mentions the word God is in conversation. He hates ties in soccer, he can't figure out ties. And his comment was, if God wanted games to end in a tie, she wouldn't have invented numbers. <laughs> Which I think gives us a little hint that maybe there's more to Ted and his uh, spirituality because using the term she, I mean he has the astuteness to realize that God's not a guy. So, but that's the only really hint we get of, of his background other than being from Kansas, and you can take whatever that's worth. Um, so what I think the series is about is relationships. The, the whole three seasons is all about relationships. They start with the relationships with the partners. Uh, Rebecca is ending up with this messy divorce that she's not finished with. Uh, Ted is in the, in the throes of signing the papers of his divorce. Uh, there's relationships of friends, colleagues, teammates, uh, romantic partners, employee, employer, insider, outside, all these relationships going on. And I think we can learn a lot about what we find that destroys or encourages those relationships in, in the series. So, um, to me, relation, God is all about relationship. That God made us to be relation, in relationship with God. That God loved us, and God wants nothing more than to have us love God back. And He created each other that we can share that love and make a relationship with each other. So, in that terms, I think it's very, very biblical. What we're going to see today is uh, all from the very first episode. I think it was handy to do that because we're going to talk all about Ted today. And they, I think, put in a lot of uh, character traits of Ted to kind of get you hooked and, and tells us a lot about Ted in that first episode. Um, what you will see in the very first scene, I think, is interesting because uh, they're on the plane going from the United States to London, and, and Ted leans over the, uh, the passenger seat to, to, to speak to his assistant coach, Coach Beard. Uh, incredible character. He leans over to Coach Beard and he says, are we really doing this? And Coach Beard says, yeah, this is nuts. <laughs> now, I would claim that's very biblical. God came to Noah and said, Noah, build this big boat halfway up the mountainside. I'm pretty sure Noah said, this is nuts. Uh, and how about uh, Abraham and Sarah? God came to Abraham and Sarah and said, just go. Pick up all your tents, all your relatives, all your animals. Go to the promised land. You'll know when you get there. We have a Jonah told to go to Nineveh, the last place on earth he would want to go. And I'm sure he thought God was crazy and he fought it for a long time. We have Mary and Joseph, we have disciples, all needed that faith in something to better or to go. And I think that dribble down to us. We go to Guatemala and meet these people and have a relationship with them that we never had before. We work out in the garden in the heat and sun and give our food away. We give food to every month. We go to free lunch every month. We also have to venture out in our faith. So I think there's a lot we can connect here. So the way it's going to work, uh, Jeremy's going to take over now and talk about Ted and what we know about Ted, and uh, then we'll see some clips. Uh, we're going to try to um, keep my computer from falling asleep because it does. Samsung wants to like reattach everything. It takes three minutes to reattach. So <laughs> try to keep my computer from falling asleep. So what are the, so those of you who have seen this show, what we're going to do is we'll, we'll create a list of some of the characteristics of Ted, and then we'll watch a few clips, and then we'll add to that list as we go. So if those of you that have seen it, what are some of the things that stand out for you in terms of who he is or what you know about him? Not So, uh, we have to uh, thank Austin. This is the only whiteboard we could find. So, sing along yeah. if you like. Is that the bass clef or the treble? <laughs> uh, Tenor clef. 
10 or 11. Yeah. What else? Let me know about them. Optimistic? Anything else? Compassionate. Compassionate. I have my own list, so make sure you do this. What else? He loves a good pun. What's that? He loves puns. He's punny. He's punny. <laughs> He likes beer. He likes beer. Yeah, he likes, likes beer. They certainly in the, in the show. There's certainly a lot of drinking going on. He's a baker. He's a baker. For his, he's a baker. 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 He's, he's loyal. Yeah. He's vulnerable. He's genuine. He doesn't give up. Persevere. Persevere, yeah, there you go. I can't think of big words, I'm too tired. <laughs> He's funny. You can put that with funny. Yeah. Funny. And gutsy. Brave, yeah, there's certainly an element of um, Going across the ocean to a place you've never been to coach a sport you know nothing about. <laughs> Brave or maybe, maybe, maybe stupid. Stupid. Maybe, maybe yeah. I would say we find out that he he has some maybe anger and sadness beneath the surface that you find out later. So maybe some some buried. Yeah, buried feelings. Depressed. Yes. I thought of a big word. <laughs> <laughs> As the show goes on, you're also kind of wondering, is this an overly optimistic, gutsy person because he really understands what's going on, or is he kind of naive? And so you feel like you always kind of alternate back and forth between you know. Yeah, is, is he Pollyannish, or is he... Yeah. Charmingly naive. Yeah, or is he, or is he putting on a, a lens on the way he views the world? Yeah. So we put a question mark behind that one. Forgiving. Okay, well, I think we're going to stop uh, our review. We've got a lot, but... <laughs> I, I want some. I want affirming. Was there a couple more? Affirming. Affirming? And there was one more. I got creative. Creative? creative. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Non-judgmental. Okay, well, we'll watch the first part here, and then we'll add to this list if we see additional things. Mustache never came up, but one out of it. Mustache. <laughs> this is dead. All right, so anything else new that you want to add to the list? Not much yet, but anything else new? Is, uh, we shot, saw a picture of his kids, or his kid, right? So he's got a, a family that he's leaving behind. And he's fish out of water, right? So all these English <coughs> sayings and customs and things, not familiar at all with those things. So he's certainly got a lot to learn. So he's, a, I think, a learner would be another one I want to add to the list. Somebody said something about going to the promised land. Out of, he took the team from the garbage to the promised land. That was talking about the Wichita, but. The sportscaster. There's yeah. a biblical reference, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else to add to the list? What did you see? He's curious about people and about new things. Curious about people and new things. It's also straightforward. Straight, straightforward? Yeah. Almost to a point he's disarming. People, people are like, what? Yeah. What, 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 <laughs> yeah, the way he, uh, the, I think the interaction with Nate originally, right, that nobody's ever asked him his name before, nobody cared about him, he's, uh, oh yeah, so people see him as a throwaway person because he's not viewed as valuable, but he does, he treats people equally well because, because he cares about people. He's an open book. Okay, so we're going to jump in just for others. 
jump in and get a chance to meet the team here. One thing I think Greg pointedly pointed out was that uh, he listened when he when he first met Nate. He just stood there. He listened. He did the same thing with Rebecca. Rebecca was shocked. Someone cares about me. It's unusual. And so he took those moments of silence to be able to encourage the other person to come forward. Oh, yeah, okay, I can do that. Um, first of all, we were t going to look at some of the attributes or the reasons we liked Ted Lasso. What do we like about Ted Lasso? And which ones are Christ like? Any suggestions? Vulnerable, compassionate. Vulnerable, compassionate. Forgiving. Genuine. Genuine. Kind. 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 <laughs> Aren't they all? Disarming. Yeah. I don't know if Jesus drank beer. You like wine. <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of wine. Okay. Yeah, okay. And bread. He's a big wine and bread guy. No, he did live with your wife. That's true. <laughs> Forgiving. The uh, one of the things I read was kind of interesting is how could they have pulled it off, or how would they have pulled it off if they had made the Ted Lasso character overtly Christian? What might that have looked like? That would have been different because this is just a very secular show. I think a lot of people would have tuned out because there's a separation in the society of, of humor and popular culture, and sometimes that seems separate from Christian. Yeah, we don't want to be proselytized, and, and I think that's pretty much what you're saying. We get uncomfortable very immediately when, oh, they're going to start coming at us with that Jesus stuff. Um, it reaches out to people of different faiths. So, um, if it were, if it was just a Christian basis, you, you would have the Buddhists and the people who are Muslim. They, they wouldn't probably want to watch it. So, it, it reaches out to people of all faiths. Can you repeat that? <coughs> Margaret, can now get a longer. Okay. I said it reaches out to people of all faiths. I, my, I, I would have loved it if they had been subtle around it. And, and if I would have been producing it and they would allow me, I would put a Bible on his desk. Just put the Bible on the desk. Do nothing different except every once in a while when he goes by, he touches it. They both had insurmountable tasks. It goes by. They both had insurmountable tasks to achieve. Jesus and Ted, yes, yes. And suffered for it, and had to make sacrifice. Any other attributes that we missed that came up with uh, Jeff? Jeff, I was just going to say, in terms of uh, if you're looking for subtle nods, I think there is one time when Ted is being um, self-deprecatory before the press, where he basically describes himself as Ned Flanders from The Simpsons, which he basically is, if you know that character as well. And that is the most uh, overt Christian example in popular culture as well. So that's basically, he is accepting that, and there's a lot of Christ-like roles within this, but they, if they got any more specific than that, they, they would probably feel uncomfortable for doing it. So. And, and I think uh, Jesus surprises us. We really look, you know, he was, a bit of a rabble rouser, he didn't go with the flow, uh, did things that got people's attention by not being one of, one of us or one of the boys. Any, anything else? Yes, speak up loudly. For someone who's pretty optimistic and uh, tries to be really upbeat all the time, um, he also sustains a lot of pain, takes on a lot of pain. Yes, and, and he gets more into that in the show as the divorce reaches a climax and 
things aren't going well. Uh, as most of you probably know, he has uh, uh, panic attacks uh, that he's holding in. Uh, the, the character is, is, is well developed throughout the three seasons. Right, but he has his own pain, but he also doesn't shy away from other people's pain. He's willing to be with them in their pain. Yes, yes, he's, uh, um, we have it up here. Oh, I wrote, it takes abuse and criticism without starting it back. I mean, there's several times uh, Roy in this episode just lambasts him and, and the press, and he just takes it without striking him back, which diffuses it, and uh, which Jesus did a lot. I felt that, that at, at least in Jesus' time, they expected the king to come in this grand flurry, and there was a lot of people who made fun of him, you know, as he rode in the donkey. You know, it wasn't what they were expecting in leadership. And I think in the same way, Ted Lasso, you know, they made fun of him because I think, who's the, what's the reporter's name? Trent, Trent. From the yeah, end. Trent, he certainly <laughs> summarized it. It was like, you're going to tell me you're going to be the leader of this group. So I think typical le leadership qualities, it was far from what people were expecting in the same time. Absolute opposite of what they were expecting. They wanted to name the coach. Uh, so, good. Uh, next week, we're going to get into truth-telling, confession, forgiveness, and reconciliation, which goes on uh, like a, uh, quite a lot in Ted Lasso. So, uh, please help yourself to more biscuits over there and coffee, and we will see you next week. Thank you.